Hi, I'm Annika, and welcome to the biggest vegan festival in the whole of the United Kingdom. Welcome to VegFest! I'm vegan and I adore animals. I work with them both on and off TV, so where better to come with Green World Television than to VegFest Bristol, home to one of the biggest and most successful vegan festivals in the world. Now in its 12th year, VegFest has gone from strength to strength with an ever larger following of thousands of vegans and newly attending would-be vegans who have come to find out how they can change their lives to become healthier and more animal aware. With diverse and tasty vegan food, vegan alcohol, live music, cookery demos, kids entertainment, celebrity talks, and an array of both campaign and produce stands, the festival is capable of soaking up hours and hours of a weekend, as once you arrive, you will become lost in the colorful and warm festivities of the day. It's food, and it's drink, and it's t-shirts, and it's lots and of food. food. We're going down to veg fest. I caught up with entrepreneur and super vegan Tim Barford, founder of both VegFest and the UK's first hemp company, Yayo. If you're vegan, everything for you is paradise. If you're veggie, you're going to come out of here thinking, you know what, I might go vegan. And if you're omni and flexi, you're going to get this beautiful introduction to the most compassionate lifestyle on the face exactly. of the earth. I've got to say, this is my favourite veg fest so far. Yeah, I'm really getting the Bristol vibe. Come down to veg fest with some excellent food, excellent dance and fantastic music and great people. Excellent. And what do we love? We love veg fest. We love, we love veg, veg fest. fest. Now where would VegFest be without its tasty food? And one thing that VegFest is famous for is showing the diversity of vegan food from around the world. So where better to stop than the sushi van to have a try of their fake duck sushi? You can be vegan and still enjoy sushi. It's fantastic, I love it. And if your taste buds are not tantalised enough after that, perhaps a spot of Rawson will do the trick. I'm here with Anna from Rawson. Now Rawson, I love her. Because I got this amazing cake through the post a few weeks ago from Rawson. You did? And I've got to say, it's one of the most incredible things I've ever eaten in my life. Not only did it taste amazing, it looks so beautiful. It was so beautifully presented. And this lady here is the, is the one behind it. And it's fantastic. And we've got all of these foods here today are raw. And what you want to get across is the message of, of eating raw food, don't you? And the health benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Like. And you don't even have to eat completely raw, which is the lovely thing about it. So you don't have to eat like this all the time, but introducing more raw foods and you can combine it with cooked foods as well just to get some of the health benefits. People have been coming along and tasting things like we've got cauliflower rice, uh, raw Thai curries, hummus that's um, not cooked and falafel, things like this. They're really unusual, but, but they're really similar flavors to cooked food. And you can mix that along with cooked food. And yeah, so things like this, would you yeah. need a dehydrator or something to create some of these foods? You would. So I wouldn't say cover all of this on an introduction to raw a workshop. If you're just getting started, you wouldn't need to make all of this kind of stuff. But pack is a lovely thing to make. It's really nice to have dry, crunchy food. Okay. Um, and these are with almonds and uh, buckwheat and spicy and of paprika. Course it's really good, isn't it, when you want to, to put it with something a little bit more moist, like a, a, a curry. Because people, they like to have the bit of pita bread and things like that, don't yeah. they? So anything like that you can put hummus type stuff on. Um, I think it's great. Now I spent the whole of January vlogging for a wonderful organisation called The Ganuary, founded by husband and wife team Matthew Glover and Jane Land. The Ganuary was created as a non-profit organisation with a mission to inspire as many people as possible to try vegan for the month of January in the hope that they might make the change for good. 
So if somebody can go vegan for one month, yeah, and they get over that barrier, what is it? Is it supposed to be like 21 days? That's of right. Breaking a habit. Yeah, exactly. So and we you, give people an extra eight days. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. So once they've broken the habit, do yeah. another eight days, and then maybe yeah. they won't go back. Yeah. And we got some great uh, re results actually. There's about 2,500 that did the survey, and of those, about half of them said they were staying vegan, Excellent. which was wonderful. Yeah. And one of the good things is we've had so many people at the Veg Fest that have come to us and said that they took part, or their friends or their family took part. So it's great getting those stories. So we are touching people, and we're making a difference. People feel better about not eating animals and yes. stuff. Um, so it's just trying yes. to help people yeah. make that make it's that. A, it's a health thing yeah. as well as an effort. Yeah, thing. yeah. So there you go. Look, the Hi, I'm here with Fiona from Animal Aid. I love Animal Aid, it's one of my favourite charities. They do some amazing campaigning. So Fiona, tell me more about this amazing thing you did in Trafalgar Square. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, well, every year we have our horse racing awareness week and one of our supporters decided that a really good way to dramatise what happens to race horses was to climb uh, one of the statues in Trafalgar Square and hang this banner off it. It took a great deal of planning, I believe, and um, quite a lot of um, daring to get it done, but it was successful and it was brilliant. It was reported in loads of media, so it really helped to get the message out, especially during Grand National Week. The Grand National is especially treacherous for horses, so it was an amazing way to highlight yeah. and bring to the public's attention what happens to racehorses. Yeah. Later on, I met up with the Vegan Society's Head of Communications, Peter Smith, who explains to me how they provide essential support for vegans all over the UK, as well as monthly magazines to provide advice and information. Vegans who are in difficult positions, yes. uh, who are vulnerable, we can, we can offer support for them. Okay. We can work with the authorities to make sure that um, there's provision for vegans as well. And so we've got a, a hospital catering association partnership which we're working on to make sure that people when if they do need to go into hospital then that they the, that the whole hospitals know that they need to provide I've, uh, good I've vegan got, food i've got to say you know even just going on holiday it's bad enough uh, finding something that doesn't have dairy in it so I, I i actually know myself a lot of vegans that will actually go vegetarian when they go on holiday because they say oh when we're traveling it's so hard to actually yeah. get that cheese out of the diet you know all these ready meals you get on the airplanes and everything it's, it's very very difficult so i can imagine it's even harder in hospitals with, with oh, yeah, patients yeah. yeah we get phone calls in the office though with people who are um, who are in hospital and usually a member of the family calls to ask us to advocate on their behalf and so we'll then contact the um, hospital we have the um an old anniversary special, which is 20 years old, oh. and I've been vegan 30 years. So oh, I'm looking wow, at that. 30 years, that's yeah. amazing. So, <laughs> I should say, lucky, I should find me for that. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Neighboring onto the Vegan Society stand was Teen Vegan, a wonderful organization, which I wish that I'd had access to while growing up, whose motive is to provide support for teenagers who have decided to change to veganism, providing meet and greets and day camps for them to attend. I'm here with Kylie, one of the founders of Teen Vegan, and of course, I think it's amazing because your, your idea is to inspire all the youngsters, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Vegan. Yeah, I mean, we just wanted there to be like a place because there's so many amazing campaigning groups out there, but there was no one who was doing anything just for like young people. So we just thought that they're like our future generations and we really wanted to do something that was just for them. And that's where it all came about from. So what do you, what do you get the most um, queries about? Is it um, youngsters that would like to become vegan and they don't know how, how what to eat and things like that? Or yeah, it's, it's quite varied. I mean, we get a lot of people who are already vegan but don't know any other vegans. So they want to meet like-minded people, get ideas for food. And then we have people who don't even know what veganism is, but just are, are curious to find out and different things like that and just want support. Um, from us, really. Do you, do you ever come across um, youngsters that want to go vegan but their parents are stopping them? A lot of the time, yeah. It's like a story from when we first began where we had like a, a girl who was in Germany um, and she 
wanted to be vegan but her, her father wouldn't let her and we offered her a note of support and she's now actually vegan and her family have turned vegan as well. Oh, so we just offered amazing. her support all the way. Like, oh, and it, wow. She's like living in Berlin now um, and in uni and her mum and everybody have gone vegan so it's just like a really nice to follow her story and stuff. Really yeah. good. So do you have any social meetings, social gatherings or is it all done online? Um, it's basically done online because we've got people um, in the USA, China, all over the world who are like members on our website. So although we're based in South Wales, our website is global. Um, and we are, the first sort of meetup that we're doing is camp this year. Excellent. Um, which is the UK's first ever young vegetarian and vegan summer Where's camp. Where's that going to be? It's about half an hour from Bristol. Um, it's in a place called Goblin Coombe Lodge. It's set on 130 acres of woodland and beautiful oh, mass. that is gorgeous. Yeah, you can all sit around making um, vegan food. I know, they're going to be having like vegan breakfast, lunch, dinner, doing cookery demos, loads of activities, wildlife walks and stuff like that. So. Midway through the day, it was time for my super juicing demo. I have been juicing for many years now and combine it with my hour of yoga a day. I was delighted to be able to help inspire so many people to unwrap that juicer which has been sat in the corner for many months, bite the bullet and have some fun. My philosophy is to enjoy yourself and make juicing something easy and accessible. It provides a great alternative to cooking for the novice vegan and can cram all of your necessary vitamins into your body in one fell swoop. After my juicing talk, I was delighted to bump into my dear friend Will Travers, president of the wonderful Born Free Foundation. Will and I have already filmed some juicing vlogs together and it was fab to see that he'd come to lend some support. It's wonderful, there's music, yeah. there's, there's food, Great there's, food. Yeah, there's presentations and, and, um, and wildlife. And there's wildlife. <laughs> see, every, everywhere Will goes, the, the, the wildlife flocks. We caught up and spoke about Born Free's <laughs> recent trip to Africa <laughs> and the situation surrounding the white rhino. In 2007, 13 rhino were poached in South Africa. Last year, 1,215 oh were poached. My. And this year, 431 have been poached so far, which is this up is on ridiculous. the same time last year. And so, how many are left? Well, it, it's now in decline. So it's actually gone past the point where the number that are reproducing is exceeded by the number that have been poached. So we're actually into material decline. They say, look, why can't we sell all our rhino horn that's in the stockpile? Yeah. And why can't we legalize the trade? And we think that that will flood the market with rhino horn, reduce the price, and reduce poaching. Yeah. And I'll say, what? you have no clue. What it will do is exactly what happened when they legalized a trade in ivory. It will stimulate the market. The market mm. will become insatiable. Mm. People who actually at the moment are going, no, I'm not going to buy it because it's illegal. We'll go, yeah. oh, it's legal. I can buy that. Now, just to prove that vegans aren't all puny and small, I thought that we should stop by with the vegan bodybuilders and have a natter. You can definitely live a really healthy and fit vegan lifestyle and build muscle. Actually, I built most of my muscle on a vegan diet because I started lifting weights and became vegan at the same time. So all my strength is really plant built. Yes. And yes, and many people who see vegan athletes, they say, oh, they probably built their muscles when they were eating meat and turned vegan afterwards. But that's definitely yes. not the case. Okay. When it comes to bodybuilding, do you still think it's important to have protein in your diet, even if it's plant-based, or do you think that's sort of a myth? Uh, it is very important to have protein, but probably not as much as many people think. And I think another misconception is that you need so much protein to build muscle, but actually you need more protein when you diet when you want to lose fat to maintain your muscle, otherwise your muscle would get degraded. Uh, soy products have a great uh, amino acid profile, then legumes, grains, okay. nuts. Okay. Yeah, then, you know, if you eat all different kinds of food and just don't stick to one okay. food, the same food. Anastasia showed me her huge guns, all fueled on plant-based power, might I add, before she was off to host a live arm press competition between vegan victims. Oh. Did I say victims? Competitors, I meant. Vegan Life magazine was on hand to show me their new glossy magazine for this month, simply bursting with recipes and celebrity interviews. Uh, in this one, we've got uh, Patrick Baboumian, who's a okay. bodybuilder. 
Um, we do some nutrition stuff, so cover things like protein or calcium or B12 that people think possibly a vegan diet is deficient in. Yeah. Lots and lots of recipes. So it's an amazing magazine. Thank you very and, much. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day today and everybody out there, Vegan Life. If you want to know any more about being a vegan, this is the magazine to find. Thank you very much. I had a good look through the magazine before popping off my Angels for the Innocent talk on my work with animals worldwide. If you think about it, every time you adopt a dog, that's one less dog put to sleep. I truly believe that the future for animals is in our hands. So if all animal organisations were to join together, we would be able to move mountains. I founded AFI as a support for many animal causes worldwide, including dog welfare, stopping the fur trade, putting an end to marine animal exploitation, support for pro-fox and badger organisations to put a stop to factory farming and the exploitation of animals in circuses and zoos. It has been a pleasure to film so many amazing individuals and organisations this year and to be part of the worldwide movement to help animals. As VegFest founder Tim so rightly states, it's not to give animals rights but to support the rights they already have. Later on, the lovely Amanda Hines, the lady behind 365 Vegans, grabbed me as I scuttled across the concourse and I became her 51st interview. A couple of weeks ago, I did go out with the Hunt Subs mm. and that was really, really exciting because the, the Hunt Subs, they, they sort of live by the moment and you don't know what to expect. And you just sort of go out there and you're running and the, the, you know, you're trying to stop the fox from being killed. Luckily, we didn't see a fox, so they were okay. I was so chuffed to be part of this. Amanda has set herself the challenge of interviewing 365 vegans in one year, and she was making the most of the festival, which was simply brimming with vegans left, right and centre to grab for her interviews. Now finally, where would a festival be without some music, some fun and some good old dancing? After a fabulous live show and some interesting dancing of my own, I caught up with lead singer Jarvis Smith of the charismatic band The Phoenix Rose and was delighted to find out that we are kindred yogis as well as green gurus. And I do lots of other things for, for, for anything that has an ethical nature to it, uh, or is, uh, is, is in respect of, of nature, the planet, human beings. So it's not just about vegetarianism or veganism. But um, So yeah, I publish a magazine that goes out with a Guardian called PQ. It was formerly called Green. It's now in its sixth year, I That's think. That's amazing. That's really and well done. It's the biggest ethical magazine in the world in terms of its readership and its distribution. So that's an exciting project, and that's kind of the shop window for the other media businesses that I'm involved in. Excellent. So I run an awards called the P Awards, which stands for People, Environment and Achievement Awards. Excellent. And it's about honouring individuals, the real people doing real things with sustainability Fantastic. and not the corporate brands. Yes, and the I know, because it all, comes down to, it all comes down to the individual. And yeah, the always, day. always. Because it's not the big companies. So I think, do you know what really concerns me is that people feel that they're not good enough to make a difference. Yeah. And I really yeah. honestly think that um, if everybody realised how important they were yeah. to change everything, yeah. then, then it would be an amazing thing. You know, I truly believe what you've just said is what's happening now because I think you and I and people like us and there's lots of us are now recognising our own strength, our own power, our own courage, our own divinity, our own connection with the source. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we've chosen a, 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 an alternative lifestyle that is now becoming mainstream. <sighs> Finally danced out fill up with every conceivable food type from every vegan van and horse from nattering with so many kindred souls, I finally left for my bed. Obviously my night would be filled with all the colourful sensual images from the day and dreams of the next veg fest. So watch out London, I'll see you there.